So uh, through, the, through the program here, we've done several of these conversations of faith. When the, when the senior minister gave his um, directive that we were going to do this together, which by the way, was just because he didn't have the guts to let one of us preach. He was worried he'd disappoint the other or we'd be mad at him. Um, when he gave us this directive, um, we started to think about, well, how, how would we do this together? And we've had such great conversations of faith that we decided maybe we'd, we'd like to interview each other. There, there's lots of things for us to sort of say on our, on our last opportunity, and so maybe we could do that together in that way. Now, Mostly this was our way of, like many things over the last four years, of Dr. Kohlglazer coming up with a really brilliant idea, and then Ryan and I have to figure out how to execute. There's a parting shot, huh? Eek. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. Okay, so, uh, so in homage to, to David Letterman, um, 10 questions that people keep asking. How about that? We started with, like Dave did Wednesday night, 10 questions you've always really wanted to say, but then we thought this really might be our last Sunday. <laughs> we might not get I'm just kidding. Back. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So um, I'm going to start. So, Shanna, are you excited? That's one a lot of you have been asking. So, first warning, or maybe this is like the third warning now, this is pretty unscripted. I mean, we have the questions, I put them on note cards, and that's pretty much the extent of where we went with excuses, this. Excuses, excuses, let's so, go. So, no, just, just be warned, we, we have not really, am I excited? All of you, everybody keeps asking, are you, are you excited? And you know, I will be. I will be, um, and I talked with my spiritual director about this, and I will be. I'll be excited in the month of June, but right now, I'm trying not to miss all the beautiful moments with all of you, and I don't, and, and it's grief, right? It's, it's grief, and according um, to the sermon planner, the senior minister is going to talk about grief next week, um, but so often in our culture, we try to skip over grief, right? We try to bypass it. And we, we say, oh, it'll be fine. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Well, baloney. There's still time before next Sunday. I may just leave in the middle of the night. He so. has been threatening just to leave in the middle of the night. That's true. Um, That's the way I grieve. <laughs> But grief is important, and processing grief in a healthy way is important. And so um, I guess I need to do that for myself, but also as clergy, it's important for me to model that, I think, um, for, for our congregation. Um, to say, when kids say, I'm sad, I'm sad too. Um, and I didn't even make it through the end of the first hymn without starting to cry. So, you know... Um, and that's okay. Grief is important, and processing grief is important, and um, that's part of, of what we do. So, yeah, I'll be excited. I'll be excited about uh, the 10th day of June. Oh, I'm next, yes. So, next question. Everyone keeps asking Ryan, so what are you going to do? Well, there are still one or two soap operas left <laughs> on television. I figure I'll choose one of them for my story. We'll buy bonbons and I'll sit on the couch and vacuum, I tease. Um, but there is, a, there, there is a sense in which, you know, for us, this is a new season. Um, and with Shanna's responsibilities, um, it's gonna be important that one of us take some primary parenting um, sorts of leads, and so that that will be. This is going to be my season to do that. I I, I think, and I'm very much excited about that. Um, I, in the process, I'm hopeful to get back into teaching. Before I went to seminary, I taught high school special education, um, and so um, that has been more of a challenge than I thought it was going to be. Getting back and finding a teaching job, but um, I'll get my foot in the door one way or the other, and and that's the plan to to work towards that. Um, I love kids and I love to, to shape their lives and to be a part of that, and the hours are good too. Um, so uh, there's, there's lots of mutual benefit there for I hope everybody involved. Good enough? You're right. Oh, okay. Okay, so Shanna, how has, how has First Church 
impacted or guided your journey. You know, the senior minister uses that word a lot, journey, so. We are a journey church. We are a journey we church. We are a journey church. You know, a few weeks ago when, when I preached, I used Ephesians 4. It's a really important passage for me and for us. We used it in our wedding. Um, Ephesians 4, that Paul writes that, I beg you to live out the calling to which you have been called. And I always really thought that I knew what that passage meant. But as I've been journaling these last few weeks, that passage and that line keeps coming up more and more for me, to live out the calling to which you've been called. And, and First Church and LA have helped me do that, to figure out that piece of that calling so clearly for me. Um, I did make a note on this one because I was afraid I'd get emotional and I'd forget what I wanted to say. Um, First Church has really nurtured me, right? Because that's what we talked about with the kids, of finding people's gifts and then pulling them out and encouraging people to live out that calling to which God is calling each and every one of us. And you've done that for me. This congregation has done that for me and helped me to live into to who I am and to come into my own and be comfortable in my own skin. Um, that has been so critical for me. And for, for me to be able to have this opportunity with this amazing, amazing church, you know, when they first called and asked me to, to apply, I went into Scott's office and I said, so Community Christian Church in Kansas City has asked me to apply their next senior minister. And he said, Jenna, this is not a church you say no to. And I couldn't be in a place where I could say yes to them without all that you have given me. And, um, I'm, that's, that's precious. That's precious to me. And that's what church is. That's what church is, is encouraging and nurturing and calling out gifts. And, and when you're not sure you can trust yourself um, in that who God is calling you to be, that you think God has lost her ever-loving mind, that you have people who trust enough for you. And, and that's, that's who this place is really has become, and um, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Was Good that job. okay? That was well was that done, okay? well said. Okay, do you want to comment on that? Do you want to comment on how No, I'll, I'll wait. You'll, oh, you okay. took my time. Oh. <laughs> What's your favorite memory? This will put you on the spot. Choose one. Well, I mean, there, <laughs> there are two that stand out right away. I mean, I do have two trophies as the chili cook-off champion. So. Bragger. <laughs> I lost last year, so it's not like, you know. Um, you know, there, there are lots of those. Um, you, you can't be a part of this place and the magnificence of it in, in every single way, not just the architecture of the building, the organ, the music, all of that. You, you can't be around it very often without having these really memorable occasions. But, um, you know, until you have, you, you have, and honestly, I think sitting on the chancel makes a huge difference. And so that first year, we, we were fresh off the boat in March, <laughs> and, and right away there was, there was Holy Week and Easter, and I, and I sat here and I got caught up in the worship of, of Come Sweetest Death on the organ with all the lights out, um, and then on Easter Sunday seeing um, 800 of you out here you know, in, in pews, we didn't have um, 800 on that first We didn't have 800? No, okay, no. well, it still seemed huge yeah. to, you know, fresh off the boat and all. I mean, it seemed huge. Um, so, so those things all really stand out. There are so many others that are, I mean, you know, they, they can't really be ordinary and be, and, and be favored. I, I don't know, maybe they can. They there can are lots be. of ordinary memories, too, that, that stand out um, with, with so many of you. Um, and I think those are probably the ones I'll carry with me the longest. Long after I forget about the, the feeling, it'll be um, conversations and, and the love that you've given me and, and received in return. Um, the first Sunday that Audrey got to be acolyte and the first Sunday that Jake got to be acolyte and when Jake was baptized last week and two weeks ago. Was that last week? Mm -hmm. Lost track. Um, yeah, you're welcome. 
Those, those all stand out in my mind. Do you have any? One? Let's do one because, you know, we've got to keep this going. I think the one for me, um, I mean, again, there are a lot, um, but one in particular was, was Jake's decision to be baptized here, that this is his place and you are his tribe. And, um, and for people to know that they have a place, that they have a tribe that loves them, and um, especially for kids, you know, um, that they need to hear it all the time, that they have a place and they have people, and um, that you have been that to, to our kids, and that that just gets multiplied with all the other, the other kids that... Um, come stomping up these that stairs. That come stomping up these stairs. Um, and Dancing. To, to, to celebrate that is... Um, is huge. I, I think. I think one of the best memories is is that now I've got two. Is the uh, is the kids last year downstairs, and we had two. We had over two hundred people. Two hundred people come down for a, a children's Christmas pageant. I mean, two hundred people stay for a children's Christmas pageant, um, and to see all those kids. That's again. That's church. That's church. So what are you going to miss? What am I going to miss? You mean besides the food and the weather um, and the weather? And the beach. And the beach covered in oil. Um, I digress. Um, what am I going to miss? Um, I, uh, there, there really are too many things. Um, I, if you would have told me um, years ago that I would have loved living in this city as much as I do, um, I would have been really surprised. Um, this city has been one of God's great surprises for me. Um, this little girl from rural podunk nowhere, Missouri, um, to love this city. And, you know, to I will miss all the surprises that, that I find in this city. I will miss us coming home from the original farmer's market and on a, on a Saturday night or on a Friday night, and you see the Hasidic Jews going to temple alongside the girls in their hot pants and their stilettos going out. I mean, only here, right? I mean, only here. Only here will my child get Korean snack foods from a, from a Hispanic kid. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, that's the kind of stuff I'm going to miss. All those little surprises that L.A. gives so much joy that, um, again, from the Midwest, we have so many uh, preconceived notions about the nuts and fruits that live here in Southern California. Um, and we're grateful that you counted us among the nuts and, and fruits. And we are grateful to be counted among the nuts and fruits you bet. Of, of Southern California. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What are you going to miss? I, I, I will just tag on to yours. Food and weather and weather. So, number six. Number six. I feel like we need a little slide okay, well. over the top. Um, what has First Church taught you about God? So, uh, you know, you all have, have just blown that box out of the water for me. Um, they're, they're, you, I, I think every season of life, you know, we, we have this weird challenge where we're, we're constantly trying to define God. And I think God is beautifully elusive and mysterious in all the right ways, where just about the time you think you have her figured all out, um, the, the target moves, and, and all of a sudden you're on a whole different journey, and, and lots of things get thrown out the window. And, and so I, I think I take with me from this experience, um, I didn't want the box to be small when I came, but I didn't realize just how big I wanted the box to be. Um, does that make sense? God, God is, you know, I mean, the boundaries are, are so much wider now than they once were, and I want them to be even wider and, and I think that is a result of, of my experience with all of you. Um, and again, in this city, you can't, you can't disconnect it, right? I mean, it is this church in this city, in this place, in this time. 
Um, and all of that says that God is so much bigger than I ever dreamed. Um, and, and it is, you know, it is being inspired. Again, my Hasidic Jew story is the, is the little man on Friday. I pulled out of the Ralphs on 3rd Street, and he's... We need a pause moment here. A commercial break, because somebody has to wor go oh, to yeah. the other worshiping God of the Rolling Stones. So only in Los Angeles does your choir director and his, half his choir, or some of his choir, Oh, just one. Get up and leave to make a dress rehearsal time with the Stones. Love you. Love you. What will we miss? What will we miss? Moments with the Stones. Yes. I mean, really. Yes. Only here. Continue here. No, I think that was it. <laughs> that, was, that was good. You've been, you've been it's up a, It's a good place. By, That's right. The been, Stones. You know, I mean, by has, Mick. Um, so, uh, what are what are some of your regrets? Do you have regrets from from these four years? Is the chair of the board still here? No, I'm kidding. He is. I'm kidding. And um, the chair of the deacons. And the chair of the deacons. He's back there too. Um, I think my biggest regret will be having to watch the continuation of this miracle from afar. I think that's my biggest regret. Um, but I feel so much better about stepping away from this little miracle now than, than I would have um, last year at this time. Um, but I sort of feel like, you know, maybe this is how I feel when the kids go off to college, where you're ready for them to go, you know, and be on their own, and yet you're not. And so I'm ready to kind of let you guys do this on your own, but then I, then I wonder about you. You especially worry about the senior minister. I, uh, all of you, really. Um, no, really. It's like, it's, like, it's like a pot, you know, and the lid is really, you got the lid on the pot and it is really boiling, right? The pot is really boiling and, you, it, and it's about to overflow here. It really is. Um, and we have worked really hard at getting that pot to boil. And if you don't get it to overflow, I do know where you live. Um, How's that for a parting shot? Um, yeah, I mean, the senior minister did say last week at, at annual meeting, how, you know, we wonder, people wonder, how are we going to do this without you? And that has been a question, I guess we forgot, a lot yeah. of people have asked. Yeah. Well, in the cleanest of my mouth that I can do, you darn well better keep doing it. Um, because, again, that's what church is. Ministers come and go, but churches, churches do it, and they keep doing it. And they keep encouraging one another. And I'm just, the, I guess the thing I'm going to regret is not seeing all of you live out into the callings to which God has called you. But I know where to find you. Will you come back? To Los Angeles? To First Church? Depends on if anyone will have us. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Um, but this is on a ser more serious note. Um, this church doesn't have a great history of clergy ethics, which or isn't something, well. or clergy <laughs> leaving well. Um, and so I, I think it's really important for us to say to you all that ethics are very important to us. And that means that, yes, we'll come back, but it will never be without Dr. Cole Glazier or whoever the current senior minister is, um, knowing about it and welcoming, welcoming us at back invitation. at their invitation. And that especially holds true when you do have your next associate minister or associate ministers. Um, we will never do anything at the detriment, um, to the detriment of this congregation. Um, and, and that means there's, there are pieces of that with ethics that we always have to be careful of and make sure that we're not stepping on anyone's toes. So did I say that okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, but we will welcome invitations to come at the end of January when we're done with the snow in Kansas City. And we would welcome invitations at the end of July when it's 100 degrees and 100% humidity. We need a little bit of that cool ocean breeze. Invitations are welcome at those, at those times. There you go. Yeah. Next. What are your dreams for, for, for First Church? What are your dreams? I guess I already played my hand a little bit with that in pointing my long, fussy mom. About finger. what your regrets were, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I guess I jumped ahead. Um, my dreams are really that you'll just keep doing what you're doing. And on this Pentecost Sunday, that you will keep that fire, that flame that is making this pot boil right now. Um, because something really special is happening here. It really, really is. Um, what, we, what, what is happening here is nothing short of a miracle. And I believe that, and I don't say that lightly. Um, but in light of, if you didn't read Scott's uh, blog about the Pew Research Study last week, um, go, back, go back and read that, because the three of us have talked about that. We've had that conversation. That blog is a conversation that the three of us have had many, many times. And, and so I guess one of my dreams for this church is that this congregation will see itself, you know, will see the opportunity that this congregation has to show some leadership for American Christianity in the 21st century. You have a unique opportunity. If what can be done in this city, here, can happen, it can happen anywhere. I believe that. I believe that with my whole heart. And this congregation has an example, has, a, has an opportunity to be an example, to show a new way to be church in the 21st century. With, a, with the dean of the rabbinic school sitting in, in this chair a few weeks ago, who is one of the smartest theologians I have ever heard in my life, um, and, and to say it in a way that everybody can understand it. And so um, my dream, my hope, my prayer would be that you don't miss this opportunity. You don't miss this opportunity. And that you don't even, some of you may not even know that you have this opportunity, but you do. And, and it's not anything I I extraordinary, and yet it is extraordinary. An example, because I, I gotta tell this story. Our, Ryan said our first Sunday, we'd been here four weeks, and I don't know if Ned is in the back row or if he's out in the narthex, but if he's in the narthex, I'm sure he can hear me. We're getting ready to process in, place is full, you know, it's a little overwhelming, you know, we're, we're still figuring out what happens in worship. We're getting ready to come in, and Ned says, you're processing, right? I said, yes, I, I think so. Am I supposed to? And he said, yes, yes. He says, we do many things well here at First Congregational Church of Los Angeles. Humility is not always one of them. <laughs> Especially on Easter and Christmas and things like that. And now I think, does anyone in Los Angeles really do humility very well? <laughs> but, but I guess like the rest of this city, we, we are a reflection of our city. And yes, we can be big and we can be grand and we can be over the top and loud, especially when Christoph is, is really showing off, which I really love when he shows off. Right? I mean, why shouldn't you show off when you're Christoph Bull and you're play, you have this instrument to play? Um, or the, the choir leaves because they have to make a rehearsal in for the stones. Um, but that's who we are. That's who we are. And I think the church has a real opportunity to see that when you're authentic, when you're real, and even if that means you're a little eccentric and grand and, and over the top, well, then that's who you are. And this church just, we just do it. You just do it naturally. Um, a little unusual and a little awesome, but we are welcoming, we are genuine, and we are authentic. And, and that's what I dream for, for this church and for every church, is just to be able to, to be who God is calling them to be in an authentic and, and genuine way. And you can't be anybody else. You're not going to be Riverside Church. You're not going to be Fourth Prayer. You're not, and nobody's going to be this church, you know. Um, and that's my prayer for Community Christian Church in Kansas City: is that they don't try to. They, I mean, they see you all and they go, "Wow!" They kind of have starstruck by you guys. They really are. Um, but they they don't need to be First Church. They just have to be Community Christian Church in their funky little Frank Lloyd Wright building and. Um, and that's all any of us can be, is to 
to live out the calling to which God has called us. There big you go. Dreams. That was big long. Dreams. That was long, but was it was long. a big dream. What are you grateful for? Oh, wow. So much that we should really wait until next week. I under, my, I, there's a rumor that the senior minister is going to give us the, the last word next week. So. Also, again, questioning <laughs> questionable, of his judgment. Questionable judgment, but okay. we'll wait until so next So number week. 10, you got to come back. You got to come back next week. How's that for a cliffhanger? I mean, it's Hollywood, right? That's what we do. So, so I guess I've already closed. Um, but one more thing. I, I, the scripture that Jake read this morning really resonates for me on this day. And he read it out of the, the message version of the Bible, which is why it may have sounded a little more um, like an 11-year-old boy. Um, but Paul's message to his church really does resonate. And this is where I had to write it down. Because every time we think of you, we will give thanks. And there is no doubt in our mind that you will keep on at this little miracle at Six and Commonwealth. And we pray that you will lead with love, always. And not sentimental gush of a Hallmark card, but the genuine, real, normal, extraordinary love that fills this place each and every day. And we pray that you share the story, that you share God's magnificent story that is happening here. You've shared it with us so many times, time and again. And I know the difference that this place has made for so many of you. And so you got to tell that story because there are others just like you ordinary Los Angeles nuts and fruits who need this place, who need to know that they have a place, that they have a tribe where they are loved. And this is our prayer. Amen.